Guys, this week I'm in the garage getting measurements so we can figure out building the firewall and trans tunnel for Caitlin's 41 Ford with the 7.3 power stroke and the ZF6 transmission. But that's not what today's episode's about. Today's episode, I'm in Africa. Well, not literally at this moment. Obviously, I'm here in the garage. But the footage that was shot here on this episode, I was in Africa and Caitlin was here all by herself. And she decided that she was going to go ahead and take a little bit of initiative again and get some work done on the 1950 Rio so that when I got home from Africa, we could do a proper Will It Run episode. You're going to have to stick around to the end to see what happens, but uh, there's a pretty good reason. This episode is titled, The Episode We Should Have Never Tried to Make. Hmm. 14 and a quarter. Remember that for me. What was that again? You guys were supposed to remember that for me. 14 and a quarter. Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Crossside Garage and Salvage, a channel dedicated to my dad teaching me, he's 15, almost 16, your old daughter, how to work on old trucks. Like my 41 Ford, my mom's 62 Fairlane 500, my dad's 47 Chevy. <laughs> and our 1950 Rio. Today my dad has um, gone in Africa, so plot twist. I'm gonna be doing this episode all by myself, so hopefully you guys find me entertaining enough to stick around, hint, hint. Today we're gonna be prepping the Rio to start work on next week. This includes pulling the spark plugs, um, filling the firing chambers up with some special stuff that'll help it do its little magic thing. Um, checking out what's under the hood, um, looking at the inside of the cab, seeing what's in there. Um, yeah, so stay tuned for all that. Caitlin, what? do you know it's blue and doesn't weigh very much? Light blue. <laughs> now, guys, while I'm in here trying to get ahead on this project so you could have something to watch in two weeks, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and play you back some footage to kind of introduce you to the 1950 Rio. There's no sense in us going back out there and reshooting everything we've already done. So here it is from the episode almost, if you believe this, almost a year ago when we brought this thing home. We gotta go big or go home. We're down to the gold. Mm. been a better time to put it all on the line Ooh, Yeah, I'm just going to say it. This thing has been uh, sitting on these tires with, I mean, they still got sailboat fuel in them. And that's probably the most impressive part about this whole thing. Holy smokes, look at the rear end of this thing. Talk about a big booty Judy. <laughs> Holy cow. Look at the tire on this one, like these tires. You know what, guys? Those could probably be retreaded again. Ooh, air brakes. This is big. So this is useless. <laughs> and the This is a PTO shaft. I don't know if it was a dump bed. I mean it might have been a dump bed at one sure point. Law. But at another point it, it had hookups for trailer brakes, which is what these are. What is this? This is a air tank. For the Oh, two air tanks. Those would be for the air brakes. Okay, I said that. I did say that. And it looks like these are pneumatic. So this is a two-speed rear end, Caitlin. So this is like a, works like a transfer case on a four-wheel drive truck, mm -hmm. except it does high and low gear on the rear end. There's a, this, the... Air horn? Yes. Rusty. Yes, the... there are air horns. What's that say? REO Motors, Lansing, Michigan, USA. Um, horsepower. Certified net horsepower, 120, I think it's a zero. Two, two, zero, zero, zero pounds. I don't know. That's a lot of pounds. 22,000 pound GVW. 
That's a big truck. Wow. All right, there's wow. a start button. Got one that's still attached here. But this would be, or is that the other way? The other way around. Oh, Dad, that's helpful. The whole thing comes up. Grab this side. I think it's gonna come up and out. It looks like it feels like it's like it's got it's can. Easy, easy, easy. Somebody has to hold it though. Nope, we won't. It's got a bar right here. <gasps> That's like a little that. bar for a big hood. Sweet. And there is an inline six cylinder gold comet. This will be so much easier to work on. Six in a row, ready to tow. Well, I got news for you, Caitlin. We're not gonna keep that motor. Okay. Um, it's still easier to work on. Here's the air compressor. Single barrel, big old fat single barrel carburetor there. I don't even know what that thing is. That's That would be a pain in the butt to probably rebuild. So this truck came out of Pennsylvania. For this truck being what it is, which is a 73, 72 year old truck, these cab corners are solid. The back of the cab is solid. The frame though, they seem to have added some sort of reinforcement here. And it looks like it just trapped water and junk. My guess is this frame is trashed and won't be any good to us. Ooh, Look at it. I didn't know we got a free ball valve out of this deal. Look at it. Nope, that's stuck. Gonna need a little bit of metal work. I don't know if you guys can see this or not. It's kind of a small hole. Make sure the camera's picking that up. Well, keep it PG. Speaking of big booty Judy. Well, boy. Floor's pretty solid. Well, except for this part over here. The door is stuck. That uh, is worn down to a nub. Right to the nub. But the shift pattern is right here. Mm -hmm. And actually this dash is in really pretty mm -hmm. good shape, except for a little bit of crust over here where this corner's rotted out. 79,000 miles, Look probably, probably 379,000 miles. Shkoom. Shkoom. Fuel Shkoom. amps, turn Shkoom. signal. That's kind of a cool beep, beep. This is hooked up to air. So this would be the two speed rear end. I think a parking brake, PTO <clears throat> engagements. And it's hooked up to an air supply right here. Wait a second, that is actually genius. So off of his own air pump, his compressor, he could fill up his own tires. Floor's in decent-ish shape. It's a big truck. Pour myself out of this truck. <sighs> that magic stuff I was talking about that we're gonna put in the holes of, yeah. Firing tape. Nope, that's also not the right word. Probably the right word, not sure. Anyways, the stuff we're using is um, half like acetone and then automatic transmission fluid. So, stole this mason jar from my mom's kitchen and I'll have to get back to her before she finds out it's missing. But uh, my dad told me, he said, <coughs> oh, vapor harm. Avoid breathing. That would have been nice to know. He told me it's just half mason jar, half full of this, and then half full of this. And then he said he said to find these little tubes, these little tubes um, that you put on the end of here so you could watch it going into the holes. But I cannot find those little tubes. So we will not have any of those. So... Just a half and half. Do not drink this at home. And then half of this stuff, which... Ugh. I mean... Ugh! Ladies and gentlemen. Not really sure what this is supposed to look like. But that does not look healthy. We might have to do a quick check with a parental and make sure. That's actually what that's supposed to look like. That's transmission fluid and that's acetone. It should be right, it really should. So we're gonna put it in there, hope for the best. Funnel, mason jar. Now out to the REO. All right, uh, we're gonna get the hood up first. So 
I remember it comes out a weird way. We'll figure it out. Oh my. Yep. Oh, this thing slides. Don't try this at home. Oh, we're alive. Oh, well, where are even? I am not sure what I'm looking at. Okay. Well, I found the spark plugs, but, um, well, I guess we can just start by removing the spark plugs. So. Ow! Here, find which one fits those. It's the spark plugs. On the other side. <laughs> Touch that. We don't know what's happening with this. <laughs> okay, these are the spark plugs right here. Yeah, I, I brought them a couple sizes. I don't know which one fits. Not that one. Yeah. Wait, this one doesn't? No. Oh, and it's easy. Grace, Grace. Well, that's not going to fit. It's a 15. Bit. Go grab a, a 20. Actually, grab an 18 and a 20. A lot's going on with this truck that I'm not really sure about. So, of course, that's why my dad made me do an episode on this truck where I don't... Okay, Grace is taking a long time to go get this. So we're going to go check on Grace. So, this is what we're looking at. Spark plugs on this side. I feel like I've already taken the spark plugs out on this thing. I can't remember, though. I think we might have. And... Nice and carefully. Get this out of here. Hello? All right. Well, so this is what it looks like. Um, it's really not that bad. Like, top is rusted out. This, focus. This is not like all rusted out. So, obviously it hasn't run since we've had it. So, they look fairly new. My dad told me to take them out, so we're gonna take them out. So I guess we're going to pour in that red stuff now. This acetone and transmission fluid. Ac mm, nope. Never mind. We're not naming it. So I'm really bad with setting up the camera in ways that people can see me. So that's all my bad. Um, we're going to try and get this camera in a way you can actually see what I'm doing. I think if we set it here. Nope. It occurred to me, as I'm taking the spark plugs out, duh, I need to take them out because that the cylinders are under them. So I probably have replaced these at one point, but I still have to take them out because that's where the juicy, ready stuff has to go. So I understand why my dad wanted me to use the tubes because that is gonna be slightly difficult, but it's in there. So. We're gonna go ahead and pour that in. We're basically just gonna put it in there until it comes out of the hole. So, I just spilled it. Hmm, if my um, mathematical calculations are correct, if we stick this funnel like that, it should be easier to pour in. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm not really sure. I guess you'll know It's not coming out of there yet, so we're gonna keep pouring. It's still not coming out of the hole yet, so keep pouring. It's 
still not coming out. How much is going to fit in here? So I've already used like half of it. Oh, let's move to this one. We'll come back to you because you've already had enough. I think that one's full. My dad didn't tell me to make more than this mason jar. So I'm just gonna keep putting it in here. Un until I run out, I guess, because, but I don't see it filling up. That was a lot of training that she floated. There was no acetone in that one. Oh, that one's full, I think. Wouldn't that just be awful if I ruined a truck? Like, he comes home from Africa, is like, all right, did you put this and this? And I'm like, nope, I put acetone transmission fluid in there. And ruined the Rio. How's that sound? That sounds wonderful, Caitlin. Now we don't have a truck anymore. Cool. Cool, cool. Hey guys. So this is the view from the fridge because GoPro repeatedly told me like three times that it was too hot and the camera turned off on me. So we're putting that back on. So if the video was cut off a little bit, that's because the video is too hot. So I definitely did not put it in the fridge to cool it down. Ridiculous. Um, right. We're gonna be using some of Sweet Patina's Skeet Skeet on the carburetor in the REO because this stuff is crazy, this stuff is great. It's, uh, it, free it freezes it, so it's like really cold. So we're just gonna Now, some of you may be thinking, she has no clue what she's doing. Why is she doing that? She's doing that all wrong. This is boring. I don't like this. I don't know what I'm doing. It might have been boring. I don't know why I'm making this. Just work with me. Just, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Good boy, stay. Now, it's almost my favorite time of the year, fall. And uh, that's the time of year we sit out here, we have a fire every once in a while, and we dodge acorns coming out of these big oak trees. You can do your fall however you like. Just make sure you're doing it in a Crossroad Garage and Salvage hoodie. Get yours at CrossroadGarage.com today to help support the channel. Now, every dollar we make, whether it's from hats, t-shirts, stickers, or these great hoodies, uh, goes to support Caitlin's build on her 41 Ford. So if you're looking for a way to support the channel, that's a great way to do it. CrossroadGarage.com for all of your merchandise and gear today. Good boy. Who's my good blue eyed boy? Well guys, this is the point in the video where you find out why it's titled the episode we never should have made. Uh, we had some technical difficulties and basically the footage of us trying to break the engine free doesn't exist. But I can tell you this, it didn't go any differently than the first time. So here's what that looked like. Doesn't seem to be moving, Caitlin. Yeah, don't say. Well guys, you know what we know about the 1950, 51 Rio now. It's not exactly as good as I hoped it would be, which reminds me of course of Romans chapter three, verse 10, which tells us that there's no one righteous. Nope, not one. Nope. This thing is just not as good as we thought it was. All right, I'm gonna show you guys a magic trick. Ready? You ready for this? Whew. Made the truck disappear. Actually, uh, what made the trucks disappear was a big stack of $100 bills. Yeah, they sold it. Now, you gotta understand, there comes a time in every project, and if you've owned one, you, you know where this threshold was for you. Where you just look around, and you go, metal work on the running boards, metal work on the front fenders, both of them, metal work on the front bumper valence, metal work on the lower grill, metal work on the hood, metal work around the windshield, metal work above the windshield on the hood, metal work in the 
floor of the cab. Bottoms of the doors were rotted out. That's going to be a lot of work. Now, I'm not opposed to a lot of work. In fact, this whole channel is about teaching Caitlin how to work hard and work on old trucks like the 50 Rio that used to be right there. But um, I also know this from watching the channel analytics over the last two years. You guys don't like long series videos. Uh, a year's worth of building doesn't really grow the channel um, as much as we would really like for it to do in order to be able to continue to support the work that we're doing. Uh, and we were hoping to keep the patina look on it and really to make that thing number one, just watertight and safe going down the road. Um, that wasn't going to happen with all the metal work that needed done. And if you know from our C10 build paint and body, again, I'm willing to learn, I'm willing to improve and I'm willing to teach Caitlin, but paint and body is like my least favorite thing. I'd, I'd rather slide down a razor blade a mile long into a pool of iodine than have to paint, prime, sand, bodywork, prime, paint, bodywork, sand, clear coat, sand, paint in there somewhere. Again, it just, boy, gets my blood pressure up just thinking about it. So what I'm saying, guys, is the last eight weeks here have been a bit of a fever dream for us with the house. Number one, the tree fell on it while I was out of the country. I was literally on the runway, getting ready to take off out of Vancouver when my wife called and said, uh, a tree just fell in the house. And I had enough time to say, call the insurance company and call somebody in the church to figure it out. She did, and we're okay. But it's been eight weeks of putting the house back together. In that period of time, I left the country two more times for work. One of those times was to Africa, which is where this episode came from. I told Caitlin before I left, hey, it'd be great if we could get that 50 Rio with the gold comet running before I, or when I get back. So pull the spark plugs, fill the cylinders up with acetone and ATF, let it sit. When I get home, we'll break the engine loose. We'll put that new starter to work that the old guy gave us when we bought it. And that's where we're at. And when the thing didn't break loose uh, and it wasn't going to start, we kind of dump the idea of even doing this Rio project, but it's been four weeks almost straight of volleyball, soccer, my work schedule, another out of country trip, uh, plus just normal life getting in the way of us putting together a video. And so it was gonna be another two weeks before we could get a video out, which would have been almost a month from, since our last video. We don't wanna do that guys. We wanna keep the content coming at least every two weeks if we can. In addition to that, we have to replace my wife's car and we're doing a few improvements to the house um, while we were there um, with the repairs from the roof where the tree fell on it, which meant we needed a little bit of extra cash. And I got to tell you, that empty spot in the yard right there, that basically represented the cash we needed. So hard decision. Yes. Do I already miss not having it there? Yes. Would it have been an awesome build? Yes, and I would have loved to have done it, but we sold it to a guy who's gonna make it work. He's gonna keep it looking just exactly the way it is here. He showed me pictures of a dozen other trucks that he has that he's done. Have every confidence that that truck's gonna get what it needed. We passed it on to a good home, which I feel good about, which I don't normally care about. Like, I'm not the guy that gets sentimental about cars, but I'm glad that one went to a good home. Before you go anywhere, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and uh, stick around because we got lots more coming. In fact, we're working soon on a couple of Will It Start videos, one on a Cosworth Vega and the other, not a Will It Start video, but Will It, Run, Will it Drive Home video on the 66 F500 we got running this summer up on Kelly's Island. We gotta go put brakes on that thing and get it across the ferry over Lake Erie because it's coming home with us. So stick around. All that's coming up, as well as the work on the 41 Ford coming soon. Thanks so much for your support, especially those of you who are members of the Shade Tree Nation. You guys are awesome, and your monthly contribution to the channel is really helping us make a dent in the work that's being done on Caitlin's truck. So thank you. Hey dudes, what's up? Welcome back to another channel of <laughs> All right. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Crosses for that. <laughs> <coughs> another episode 
of Cost Edgar, Raj, and Salvage. A channel. Okay. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Cross Thread Garage and Salvage, a channel dedicated to my dad, teaching his 15-year-old daughter, me, how to work on old trucks. Okay, right here, we're gonna do a clip of me with all the trucks. This is a message for you, Dad, not to the world. This is the part where it's um, where my dad's teaching how to, me how to work on old trucks, and I'm gonna say, like my 41 Ford, and then I'm gonna go to the Fairlane, and then your truck, and then the REO, or in a different order somehow. But you're gonna cut to all those, and then it'll cut back to um, what we're doing today, okay? So that's the next clip. So it's um, teaching me how to work on old trucks. Like my 41 Ford. Like my 41 Ford. No, I need to be standing. Cause I'm gonna like, I need to be standing next to it like it is in the thing. Like my 41 Ford. My mom's 62 Fairlane 500. And then, oh, I need my phone. Wait, the REO is a 50. My dad's 47 Chevy. And our 1950 Rio. 